morning again. My name is Victoria Luna, Public Information Officer for the Webb County Sheriff's Office. And I'll be your mistress of ceremony this morning. On behalf of Sheriff Martin Cuellar, we welcome you to today's funding announcement ceremony, where we'll talk about $4.3 million in Operation Stone Garden funding. I'll let today's speakers talk a little bit about how that funding will be used. But in the meantime, I will recognize some several public officials who are with us today. This will be in no particular order. We have Mayor Pete Sines with us today. We have U.S. Representative Henry Cuella. State Representative Richard Peña Raymond. <laughs> District Clerk Esther Devollado. <laughs> Justice of the Peace, Precinct 1, Oscar Liendo. <laughs> Justice of the Peace, Precinct 2, Danny Dominguez. Salvador Johnson. <laughs> Justice of the Peace Precinct 4, Jose Pepe Salinas. <laughs> we have Trustee for District 2, Guadalupe Gomez. <laughs> Representing Border Patrol, Assistant Chief Jose Martinez. Laredo Police Department, Lieutenant Edgar Garza. <laughs> if there is any public officials that we do not represent this morning, can you please stand? Ms. <laughs> <Liendo. laughs> <laughs> Wonderful, thank you all for joining us this morning. Please help me welcome our first speaker and the person who helps secure the funding, U.S. Congressman Henry Boyga. Thank you and uh, good morning to everybody. Uh, Sheriff, it's always a pleasure seeing you. Uh, and I certainly want to say to all of y'all, thank you so much. I want to say this has been a, a team effort. I certainly want to thank everybody from the city. I was telling the mayor that uh, I think about half of the money goes to the police department. Uh, and then to the constables, uh, also, and of course to the uh, deputy sheriff. But out of the $4.3 million, uh, this will be going to the to the city uh, for our police officers, and I certainly want to thank them. So, Mayor, it's always a pleasure. Uh, the other public officials are present here. I see my good friend Richard Raymond. Uh, we really, really appreciate it. I know you're going to say a few words, but uh, your support for law enforcement um, doesn't go unnoticed, and we thank you for everything that you do. Uh, in, uh, in Austin, and then all the JPs, I think we got all the JPs pretty much here present today, so we have a quorum of the JP, so uh, your honors, your honor, your honor, your honor, your honor. And, uh, so thank you so much. Um, I, uh, uh, first of all, I, I know that uh, Assistant Chief Martinez is here. Please send my best uh, to our chief, uh, to Carl. I know we were texting this morning about a couple of things, and we really appreciate uh, this, I, I'll just say this very, very, very general. I really appreciate the work uh, that the chief um, and his folks have done with me. For many years, we've been trying to get that checkpoint, uh, Charlie Check uh, 29, uh, done. Uh, all I needed was something uh, so we could put the money in the appropriations. Uh, and I have to say that uh, all the chiefs in the past have done a great job, uh, but I think uh, our current chief, um, has done more uh, to move this forward, uh, and uh, this request will be funded in parts because it would be a large, large expansion, uh, so our Border Patrol <coughs> folks uh, can uh, do a better job, and I just wanted to say we'll do an announcement later at the appropriate time, but I think you're going to see a big change uh, coming up there, and, and Richard, we're going to be working, we were with the Department of Transportation uh, to make sure that they also do the transportation work. Uh, along with the uh, you know, this huge expansion of checkpoints. So, uh, Chief Martinez, I want to thank you. And, uh, you know, in the 
work, I'll, I'll say this because this has to go through um, Border Patrol. They approve the plan that the sheriff turns in. What is the plan for um, uh, for our area? And this money is going to be very helpful. I'll just say this. Generally speaking, from this area down in the valley, 60% of the Border Patrol are doing uh, migrant processing, 60%. Maybe about 10% are doing administrative work. That only leaves about 30% of the men and women uh, out there doing the work, only 30%. Uh, therefore, there's less rescues. Therefore, there's more deaths of the migrants out there. And therefore, the bad guys are gonna be trying to pass um, uh, drugs uh, in large amount. We saw what all the just caught. I think it was about 1,500 pounds of cocaine, one of the largest amounts uh, in a long time. So the bad guys are looking at what happens here. In the appropriations, we put more money to hire uh, more uh, men and women in green. I also added money to hire more men and women in blue, uh, about 300 of them. And at the same time, about a thousand support staff services uh, to make sure that Border Patrol is not not at the border processing center, but they're doing the work uh, where they're supposed to be doing, and we'll let somebody else do the migra uh, migration work. And the reason this is so important is because every sector is very different. The sector from Del Rio, you get Haitians, Venezuelans, and other folks, and the Valley gets a lot of uh, Central Americans and other, plus there's about 60 countries are being represented. That is, people from 60 countries are coming in. It's not only the Mexicanos. Laredo, and correct me if I'm uh, wrong on this, but Laredo gets about 94% are single adults from Mexico. <clears throat> when was the last time we saw some uh, unaccompanied kids or family units here in our era? We don't. Laredo's different because the organizations control everything coming in. Uh, and this is why the Border Patrol in our area, uh, this money is going to go a long way because we will have more boots on the ground, whether it's sheriffs or constables. Um, uh, out there and they will complement what Border Patrol has, especially when 60% are doing border processing migrant uh, uh, work on that. And my personal opinion is we got to get them out there in the field, number one. Uh, and number two, we got to make sure, uh, make sure that there are repercussions because if there's no repercussions for people coming across, it's very simple. People just keep coming because it's only a slap and it just entices uh, more people uh, coming in. So to Border Patrol, I want to say thank you so much sure. in working with the uh, sheriff and the other law enforcement to make sure that we get this plan. When you look at the amount of money uh, that has come in, uh, this is one of two programs that I helped start uh, years ago uh, because of being a representative from the border, we kind of get input from Richard and from you all. One, in 2008, we started Stone Guard. If you remember at that time, there was an effort to start, it was just for border sheriffs. Um, this money has now you know, changed what we share with police, uh, constables, and other folks. Uh, and it was just for the southern border. And then when they saw the money, the northern sheriff said, hey, what about us? And then when Trump came in, he said, well, you know, I got to win uh, Florida. So he sent some money to Florida uh, also. So we're trying to keep uh, most of the money will come to the southern border, especially Texas itself. So we started this program in 2008. The other program that we started that you hear a lot about it now is what Holden Institute gets, Catholic Sureties, that's humanitarian relief. The money so people can, the non-for-profits or the cities or the counties can bear the cost of all these people. I always smile when I hear the mayor, uh, the mayors of New York and, <laughs> and New York City and Washington DC, they're saying, oh, bring the National Guard, we're getting so, people, so many people. They only get a drop of what we get here at the border. Only a drop. You know, the hundreds that they get there doesn't compare. One time we were getting about 8,000 uh, people coming in. So this is a day in certain areas. So this is why this is so important to make sure that they get the relief on it. We started this in 2008, and it's been instrumental in funding our efforts to secure the southern border. Uh, the program uh, is, is used uh, for different reasons. The main reason is overtime. If you have a police officer or a deputy sheriff or a constable that only works, let's say, eight hours, then you can get an extra, let's say, whatever y'all decide, four hours. So they'll be there 12 hours. Four hours will be overtime. It becomes a win-win situation for the 
deputies or the police or the constable because they get paid overtime. They get extra uh, money uh, for their families and for the work that they uh, they do for us. But at the same time, it allows more boots on the ground, uh, uh, Martin, uh, more boots on the ground. So this overtime pay goes a long way to help the individual families of the uh, uh, law enforcement, but also, but also um, uh, for providing more boots on the ground. Uh, equipment, communication, technology, it's less of that, but it's mainly used for overtime, but it can be used for uh, equipment and overtime. Uh, this enhancement uh, has been good for many ways, uh, including a faster response time. So when you have extra people out there, that means a faster response uh, time out there. So this has been uh, something that we started at $55 million. I increased it at $90 million a year, this uh, program. Uh, uh, this has helped us in two ways, in the sense, the increase of money, I think you all started a little bit over, over a million dollars, and now this announcement is $4.3 million. It's increased since we got. Plus, it allows us, not only the border counties, it allows us to go into LaSalle, McMullen, uh, Duval, uh, Duval, Jim Hogg, and other counties, so it allows us a different layer uh, for the local communities to provide that. Uh, in 2015, uh, Webb County was receiving uh, about $2.8 million. Now, of course, we're doing an announcement of $4.3 million. Since we started this program, uh, Stone Garden or Webb County has received 49.6, almost $50 million of Stone Garden money. Overtime equipment uh, that can be used. And as I mentioned, uh, in 2008, uh, Laredo got $1.9 million, and now, of course, we're talking about 4.3, which is a total of almost $50 million. So again, this is a team effort uh, that we're uh, uh, talking about here today. Uh, so the sheriff, to you men and women, uh, to the constable, all of y'all, thank you so much. For the police uh, uh, mayor, and, and of course, we want to say thank you so much. I know we're going to hear uh, from Mr. Gassa a few minutes, and, and again, uh, send my best uh, you know, to the chief and to all your men and women. And uh, Border Patrol is going to take all the allocates. They're not going to speak uh, today, but Mr. Martinez, uh, we really, really appreciate what Border Patrol does for our communities. Thank you, and God bless you. Thank you so much. And I think you know who you are by now. <laughs> but it's a delight to, you know, to be here, especially uh, announcing you know, the good things that, that the accomplishment uh, does for our community. Uh, you know, I don't get tired of saying this because it's, it's reality, it's the truth. Uh, you know, uh, Henry Aguilar uh, uh, is, is a native Laredo man. He loves his, his community. Uh, he's done so much. Uh, you, look uh, whichever way and you see the footprints of, uh, of our congressman and that means that he's, he's effective uh, in, in producing and, and primarily producing money for our community and thank you so much for that and everybody in your staff and all the people that you all that uh, work with you as well and of course uh, the Sheriff's Department, law enforcement in general, uh, Border Patrol, uh, uh, you know, the county, the city, uh, you know the constables uh, and I can go on and on. Uh, uh, you heard our congressman speak about uh, border security and the safety that, that these monies bring. But let me just uh, go a little bit, bit uh, you know, differently here. From my end, too, uh, I, I appreciate that very much, but also from the economic standpoint. Uh, you know, we have over close to 5,000 federal employees uh, just in law enforcement alone here in Laredo, Texas. The average uh, you know, earning capacity of these folks, I'm told, is close to $100,000 uh, per year. Uh, so these, uh, these are well-paid uh, you know, individuals uh, with benefits, uh, and that produces you know, the potential of $500 million here in Laredo, Texas. So this is why I've always said, uh, uh, of course, we need security and we need the safety, but also we need the, the economy uh, to flourish, and these people contribute so much. Uh, and of course, these monies also uh, are spent for overtime and, and partially for equipment, and, and this contributes 
to La Evo, Webb County, uh, and uh, so we're extremely appreciative. I'm always welcoming uh, more federal presence, more law enforcement presence, uh, uh, for more security. The, uh, you know, the justice system that we have here, and we have tiers here that, that, that are represented by these uh, JP judges and, and their staffs, uh, and it goes up to the district courts and the federal court system and so on. I mean, that's, that's also very much a part of, of what we need. Uh, the congressman spoke about this checkpoint. We've been after that checkpoint for years through his leadership. And, uh, and politics comes to play. He, he speaks generally, I speak specifically. <laughs> <laughs> and I understand your position, Henry. But I'm leaving in you know, two or three months, so. <laughs> <laughs> Let it roll, man. Let it roll. <laughs> I go back to the checkpoints. I know, uh, you know, it's and it goes up to the administrations in Washington. Uh, you know, one administration would put money for it, another one would take it off of the table simply because of the politics. Uh, and this is why people, when I get criticized sometimes, is uh, no, America, I don't follow this and that. As a mayor, as, as, as leaders, uh, you know, we got to look at the bigger picture. Uh, there's millions of dollars at stake uh, that come to our, our city, our county, uh, and, and we got to know which, which fights to fight and which fights to, to maybe someone else should carry that banner and, and, and do that for us because there's, there's, there's livelihoods at stake, people that depend on these monies at stake. And yet, there's plenty of soldiers out there that, and someone else possibly could carry that, that banner, that battle them. So we got to take turns and see who, who's, by way of strategy, it was the best uh, to, you know, to, uh, to fight that battle then. So anyway, uh, and, and I think too, uh, in terms of specifics, I think what, what made this, this uh, you know, the expansion of that uh, inspection, this, the situation that, we, that occurred in San Antonio, if it weren't for that, frankly, uh, you know, I think it would be in this uh, cat and mouse uh, you know, situation, but but unfortunately, it it, it, it uh, you know the event happened, but yet it, it produced fruits now uh, for that uh, checkpoint, and that is badly needed. We need the uh, technology, equipment, and of course more personnel. And of course, the border patrol. I'm I'm 100% behind you all, uh, and I agree with the congressman. I think there's got to be consequences. You know, uh, the majority of the people are good people, you know, seeking a you know, different life, and this is why we need immigration reform, and we can go on and on and on. But yet, there's people that aren't detected, that are the getaways. Those are the scary people, uh, and those are potentially bad people that, that can do harm to, to us, to our nation, and, and this is why we need stronger border security and, and, and with consequences. Uh, and, and we have to be mindful of that too. Um, it's not a perfect world and, and there's bad people out there. Uh, and then I think we see some of that every so often here in our community as well. And so anyway, I can go on. I'm extremely appreciative of uh, law enforcement. I'm extremely appreciative of the monies, the funds that, that are received. Uh, for us, it means uh, uh, payment of our police uh, officers, uh, you know, overtime primarily. and. Uh, and, uh, and we've been spending some time in stash houses and of course drug busts and, and some pursuits, and even though we, we try to you know, pick our pursuits because it, it leads into you know, more um, you know, safety issues. And, but oh, my hat's off to always to law enforcement. Then. You know, I will never second guess a law enforcement officer, never. Because you don't know what, you know, the instant that they're there. So thank you very much. Thank you. Welcome, Edgar Garza, Lieutenant Edgar Garza, representing the Chief of Police. Good morning, everyone. On behalf of Chief Claudio Trevino and the Laredo Police Department, it's an honor to be here this morning. Uh, Congressman Cuello has done tremendous work over the years. Yes, OPSG has been around for several years. And along with, with our friendly forces, such as Border Patrol, Constable's Office, the Sheriff's Office, We've been able to combat these transnational criminal organizations. And yes, we all wear different uniforms, and it's beautiful to be here in this room today. But the same, the mission is the same, Congressman. The mission is the same, and that is border security. 
The Laredo Police Department last year, along with Border Patrol, through these collaborative efforts, dismantled several stash houses, turning over over 2,000 people to Border Patrol. That's amazing work. It's about the sharing of information. Once again, yes, we all wear different colored uniforms, but our mission is the same. Through operations such as Operation Stone Garden, this information sharing has increased, which is a beautiful thing. I'm in continuous, continuous conversations with Border Patrol, with the Sheriff's Office, exchanging ideas, exchanging names, because typically, Sheriff, I'm pretty sure you will agree, it's the same offender. It doesn't matter who gets him, as long as we get him. The mission is the same, ladies and gentlemen. It's about the quality of life in our community. And through efforts through Congress and Cuella, in allowing this funding to come to our community, we are making our place a much better place to live. And it's about supporting our friendly forces. Yes, there is a major gap. Yes, they are at 30%. So it's our responsibility to bridge these gaps. The Laredo Police Department is currently deploying 40 operations monthly with multiple assets in strategic locations. Because once again, yes, there is counter surveillance, and we understand that. But with the sharing of information, these operations are a success. Congressman, thank you so much. Chief Trevino, thanks you from the bottom of his heart. Unfortunately, he couldn't be here today. Border Patrol, thank you so much. And the Sheriff, thank you so much. Thank you very much for your time. Um, we appreciate all these efforts, and we look forward for these types of operations to continue. Okay. Appreciate it. Thank you. Say some words. I'll be at the end. Uh, Mine won't take long, believe me. <laughs> Richard. I'm still, I'm still uh, you know, the mayor's words, 100,000. Is it too late for me to get into federal law? <laughs> 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 mayor, you got to be careful because the press, since you're, you may mention you're going to be leaving. Uh, on his own accord, right? He couldn't run again. Uh, but when you said, you're going to watch the you said, uh, I've been spending a lot of time in stash houses. Whoa. <laughs> Mayor says he's been spending a lot of time in stash houses. Uh, I just want to, I wanted to come and just add my thank you uh, to the congressman, to Congressman Henry Quayle. Uh, and, and of course, I couldn't help but thank you, Henry, when you got up there. You got up here. To, to the sheriff. The sheriff, it's always great to see you. And as a film that we're growing up, you didn't always feel that way about it. <laughs> but now it works. Um, but you know, last session in Austin, and we and, and the congressman and I do work very closely together, as I do with the sheriff and the police chief and, and our JP and constables and, and everyone in this room who's part of the law enforcement system, Border Patrol. Um, last year we had the legislation in Austin. I was the author with four of my colleagues. It was House Bill 1900, and, and, and what that bill said was that you can't defund the police that is law enforcement in the state of Texas. Yeah. 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 Believe it or not, I had to stand up and defend that bill. I had to debate. I was the, uh, the only Democrat that authored the bill, and then four Republican colleagues, so I had to debate that bill. But part of why I did that not only because I've always understood that law enforcement, that is keeping our community safe, is the number one thing. It really is. Our folks have to feel like they're safe. But I also knew that if we didn't do that, then when the congressman would, would get up there and fight and work so hard to get funds like this, it would be simply filling in what we were taking out. And that wasn't going to work for me. That wasn't going to work for us. If we had let, if we hadn't passed that bill and you would cut you know, the sheriff's department, you cut city police, then this money is just sort of filling in the hole that has now been created. But because of that, we continue to work in that partnership to work. The work that the congressman does means even more because it's on top of what we're doing already at the county level, at the city level, what Border Patrol is doing. And so it adds to our security. I wish that we didn't uh, have to worry about, you know, uh, people breaking the law. But they do. 
That's why you guys got jobs. I know you guys are glad that people break the law, but you know, we're just glad you're there to make sure that, that you know, that you keep the peace. So I, I wanted to come again to say, you know, I said this is the last time we were something together. I said, uh, the congressman, we should just nickname him the mailman because he always delivers. <laughs> deliver again, deliver for law enforcement, and deliver for public safety. And I thank him. Thank you for what you're doing, congressman. Keep doing it. All right? Thank you. And now our I, I appreciate it. Yeah, I appreciate those words, Richard. And uh, before I say anything else, let me uh, just congratulate all the public officials that are here and also the uh, law enforcement that are here. And, you know, when I go to Austin, you know, Richard always welcomes me just like my brother does, right? He has to. And uh, Richard always, always welcomes me, you know, like with open arms. You know, he'll say in front of everybody, you know, the whole capital, and I'm like trying to hide, you know, this guy, my favorite term from Texas, from Webb County, or was it just Webb County? Texas. <laughs> Texas. <laughs> From Texas, you know, so so we we really thank you, and I know that we have friends in in Texas and in Washington, and, and I really appreciate that. And, you know, as, as a spokesman here for the Webb County Sheriff's Office, and 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 your sheriff, you know, I really really am proud to be your sheriff. You know, we're always striving to do the best that we can, um, you know, and working together with other agencies. Let me tell you a story, and. You know, this was this one wasn't planned. You know, I just thought about it when Henry introduced uh, Joe Martinez. When I was in narcotics with DPS, you know, we we worked together. You know, we had a small office. It was uh, maybe five at one time, and, and then before I left, it grew to about 12, 15 employees that I supervised. And we always worked together because we we're a small unit. You know, this is how I learned you know, throughout my career as a supervisor to get along with other agencies and work together. And um, when I was there, you know, I had I had one one agent at the time, everybody else was off or sick or whatever it may be. When I had five agents, it's not that many. So so I, I, I will work very closely with the uh, anti-smuggling unit, which was Border Patrol. Y'all don't know what anti, except Except for the older, like Pepe and, and other people that are here that, that realize what the anti-smuggling unit was from Border Patrol. And his father was the one, one of the agents there that uh, would, would work at the anti-smuggling unit. We used to call him Little Joe, said, Joe, come on, let's go, man, we got a case. And then I would call ICE, and then I would call DEA, Laredo Police, you know, with uh, Choche, Medina, you know, all those guys, the older guys, you know, and, and we used to form a group and we used to do what we needed to do is work together and arrest the criminals. And, you know, I don't know if that's telling people how old I am, you know? <laughs> <laughs> but I've worked with his dad and I'm very proud of that. You know, that's one of the things that we that we share every time I see him, you know, says, hey, say hello to your, your dad and, you know, for me. So, Thank you. you know, so that's, that's the whole thing about this, guys. You know, working together with Operation Stone Guard, we work together so we can accomplish what we need to do here. You know, and that's to provide public safety for the community. That's the bottom line. You know, nobody takes credit. Everybody works together and we take care of business. You know, so so again, Henry, I know that we, uh, we've we been looking at, at, you know, the Stone Guard because we depend on it. We depend on it to put our people on overtime. You know, fortunately, the county is limited. Just kind of, you know, kind of like the city. You know, we can't afford to to put everybody on overtime. You know, so we wanna we wanna thank you, you know, for having this and increase, you know, the uh, the, uh, the funds for Operation Stone. You know, and that's what I call, and I always call it, it's a force multiplier, because nobody, no agency by themselves, can work it and secure Webb County. It has to be a group. All the constables, everyone, the red police, you know, everyone that work together, we can we can make it happen. And you're right, uh, Mayor. You know when you say we want the economy too, but the first thing is, security. judge is security, right? You know security. Once we secure, then the economy comes over. 
you know, those $100,000 that they make, you know, they can contribute to the, to the city. <laughs> you know, so, so again, you know, thank you very much for being here. And Henry, again, thank you. And, and um, we are looking at working with you guys. Sure, thank you. Okay. being with us today. If we can please have the